When you hop into a match, what is your thought process of what's your first goal? Okay, this is actually a really good question because um, my approach is is very, it's very, I mean, yes, yeah, I would say it's very methodical. The first thing you have to understand, and we'll probably take the last 10 minutes to um, go through this, and and I'll, I'll we'll look at a couple of games so you. So you can get an idea of what I'm thinking and how I want to go about the game. Okay. So first off, I know since you're new here, let me explain that this deck here, not necessarily this deck, but the the basis of this deck, which is this here, has been the deck that I've used for the last three years. I've, I've changed probably one card. I tried Cage. Uh, with this, and I didn't like it. I switched back to Tombstone instead. So I know the ins and outs of this deck, and that, that's very important um, when we get into uh, replaying the game. I w once the champions came out, I decided, okay, I really want to have a champion in the deck. So I was trying Archer Queen at first, then I really like Skeleton King. Okay. All right. So that being said. I know I know all of the strengths and weaknesses of my deck. So my thought process going into a game happens well before I even start the game. The first thing I want to say is, okay, how am I going to win the game? I want to win the game by placing Mortar right at the bridge. Uh, yeah, right at the bridge. It does damage. Cart gets in, does damage, and then I finish it off with either Skeleton King or or Cart. Or we have the Hut and the Tombstone, which become so overwhelming that it's tough for them to stop. So my thought process is going in to the game is okay. I'll, if I have if I have a building, if I have Tombstone, if I have Hut. I'm going to play those first. I want to see what they have in their hand. Then the other two cards really are just dependent on what my opponent likes to do. From there, then the game plays itself. And then I'm, I'm thinking about like, okay, how, how am I going to counter? Uh, what do I need to save? What card do I need to save in order to play another type of card um, as a counter? All that type of stuff. So... So that's my thought process going in. Now, let's say I was playing, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll do the game that, uh... actually we'll do this game because I was, I was trailing. So my thought process is, okay, I know how I'm going to play. It's, it's, if you think of it like, no, well, I don't I know. I, I, everybody likes to do chess analogies in 2020 and 2021. So I'm trying not to do that in 2022. Okay. <laughs> so my thing is always, okay, have a start. Like, what am I going to, what am I going to do first? Without even knowing the cards I'm going to have, what am I going to do first? And the first thing is, okay, I'm going to put down a building and let it spawn. And then see what happens. Preferably it be uh, Hut. If it's Tombstone, it's Tombstone. That's fine because it just cycles to another card in, in my hand. And then I can figure it out from there because then by that point, my opponent has probably played something. Okay, so we're going to go into the game against the, the Hog that I won. Okay, so this is my starting hand, and obviously I don't know what they have. So here I see that okay, I have I have a tombstone and I have a hut on deck. So there's two options for me, just thinking of how I want to uh, start the game. And the first is okay, I can play tombstone now, and then just let it spawn. This is going to tell my opponent, hey, I'm going to go on the left side here. If you want to go on the right side, I have a Tesla. If they absolutely don't do anything, then I have a hut because that will be the next card I play. And I'm waiting on Skeleton King 
because I really want to see like how the game truly evolves before I play Skeleton King. If it's if if Skeleton King has to play the role of Fireman, where it it's a really bad situation and and the only way to stop it is to bring in Skeleton King, then obviously I'm going to play. So right now in this moment here, I'm thinking, okay, I know for sure the card I'm going to play right now is Hut. So the next thing I have to think of is, okay, when am I going to play it? Most people will play it at 10. But since I don't like to play, uh, since I don't like to leak elixir, I'll play it at 9. And this is just to get a little bit ahead of what my opponent wants to do. I'm giving them the one elixir advantage. Or, uh, yeah, one elixir advantage. Because they could do a 5 and 5 if they have in their, something in their hand. Like, uh... I would say Lumberloon. Well, I don't... Well, no, Lumberloon's a four and six, I think. Jeez, I don't remember. But that's 10 Elixir right there. So if I play Hut at nine, they could come with Lumberloon. Obviously, I'm... Now, that aside, I'm not thinking in my head like, okay, I know I'm facing Lumberloon, so I'm going to do this, I'm going to wait. No, I have no idea what they're, what they're playing. So the first thing we do is we're going to... Play Tombstone. And we'll play it at 9. Okay. The key here... From this point here. They have now played a card. And I think that... The one thing... And I learned this... Uh, watching other games... Um, and, and people teaching others in other games how to play. You see here they played Ice Spirit. They played Ice Spirit. Oh yeah, I wish you joined earlier. Ask more questions. Just good walkthrough. Hey, thanks. <laughs> I, I really try. <laughs> so, first thing is they play Ice Spirit. Now, this is a big thing that a lot of people miss in terms of playing any competitive game, is that you have to understand exactly what your opponent wants to do. It's not about what you want to do. Yeah, in the beginning, before you even play the game. You, you have the thought process of, okay, this is how I'm going to try to win the game here. But then you also have your opponent who's who's thinking the same thing themselves. It's, okay, this is how I want to win. Okay, who's going to, who's going to, who's going to do what? I mean, how's, how, how's the self going to work out when two people want to do the same thing, which is get the win. That ice spirit is very key here. Because from the moment they start playing a card, you have to guess their win condition. And so, if you've watched, uh, you know, previous streams, you can go back to previous streams. The moment my opponent plays a card or cards throughout the game, you'll hear me say, "Okay, they have to play this, or it's this, or the deck is this." So, let's focus on this ice spirit right here. Now, this Ice Spirit tells me two things. Okay, it's likely 2.6 because that's what I've been facing a lot in this in this season is a lot of 2.6. That, the, that they played it right on the bridge tells me that, hey, Hog could be coming right behind it immediately. So that's very important. Actually, I'm going to stop the timer here. <laughs> It's very important to, to be ready because with Tesla because Hawk can be coming right at the moment because they played Ice Spirit right on the bridge. Now, if it's not Hog 2.6, then I'm thinking like, okay, what, what other decks use Ice Spirit? And then try to figure it out from there. Maybe it's Expo. Maybe it's Ice Spell. Maybe it's a very fast um, cycle deck that I, I it's maybe a modification of um, Golden Battle Healer. You know, that's that's what you have to, to think. Um, I wish I could create like a, a, like a video set of guess the win condition because that is so important in how to play Clash Royale. You have to guess the win condition before they play it. If you know that, then. How you play your cards will line up 
and you get the advantage because now you can answer everything that they do. You can wait on playing cards or you can just hold back cards and not play them at all in the game because you know that it's 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 going to be a detriment to to what you want to do. Okay, so they play Ice Spear here. Now they play Fireball. So now I know exactly that this is a 2.6 deck because those are the two main... I want to say two main, but two of the main cards in their hand. So this tells me this. Because they play Fireball, and now I know that it is a, a Hog 2.6. I cannot play Skeleton King. It is very tough for me to play Skeleton King in, in this game against this lineup. I have a very hard time with it. And I know that my deck is not suited to counter 2.6. So I have to play perfect with the cards that I have. So essentially... You see four cards and a card on deck. It's really three cards and a card on deck. Now I have a disadvantage at this point because I know that I cannot play a card that I think will, that will that will basically hold me back. That's four elixir that could really be the game right there. Okay, but the good thing that that they did was play the fireball, so I can play hut, and hut is safe. That's the that's the bonus of them playing Fireball right now, is that I can play HUD, and unless they have Mirror, my HUD is safe from whatever they want to do. They can play Log, they can wait, the Skeletons come out, and so now I know for sure that this is 2.6. So you see what they, what they did. They have played Skeletons, they've they played um, Ice Golem. They have to play one more card and then they're back on cycle. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, when is it a good time to play Mortar? That's the key here. When is, a good, when is it a good time to play Mortar? And when can I cycle to Fireball because I know that they have Musketeer in their hand? I'm ready with, with Tesla whenever Hog comes out. Now it's... It comes down to, to a couple of scenarios. Okay, if they play Hog, I have Tesla. If they are going to be passive, then I'm going to play uh, Mortar. So, I play I play Tesla in the center because you can't. I mean, Hog will go to it, uh, guaranteed. There's just no way it can it can duck it. This is kind of unfortunate because we played um, Log and Tesla at the same time. So it is going to do some damage if it grows up, but it doesn't. Okay, so they played Musketeer, and now I have a bunch of Spirit Goblins at the tower. So I have two options here. I can just let the Spirit Goblins deal with the uh, Musketeer, or I can fireball it. I can be super aggressive and fireball it. The reason I, I threw a fire, I'm pretty sure I threw a fireball, right? I did. The reason I was super aggressive in that situation is because I still have a very, very healthy Tesla. If they wanted to be aggressive themselves and also play something like a Hog right now, or Ice Golem or Cannon to try to get rid of it, that Tesla's there to take care of it. So let me get rid of Musketeer as soon as possible, and I'll deal with whatever damage I have, I have to deal with um, from there. So right now they're cycling. They figured this is their key to winning the game is cycling. They really want that Tesla gone. But you see it's still up. Now they play Fireball again. So when I see that, I see, okay, they are trying their best to get into, into cycle. What they want to do is they want to really use Fireball on Hut, but they can't. And they're trying to line up to where they have Musketeer, Hog, Log, um, Ice Golem, Fire, um, Ice Spirit together. But they're not at that point yet. So again, I can play Hut and I'm safe. So I have the lead. And I have a healthy Hut. And a Tesla that's ready to go again. So they're gonna go for it. 
And you see, like, have everybody, everybody doing their job. This is really good. So, that Ice Golem doesn't look like anything, um, to be honest. It really doesn't look like anything. It looks like they're just trying to, to cycle. But what this tells me is that they're trying to figure out a way to get Musketeer in the game. They know I have Fireball in my hand. What they're trying to figure out is, okay, how can we get it set up to where Musketeer will be, will be used to her maximum potential? So right now they're just cycling because they really can't, they really don't have a way to do, to get in. And I have the lead and there's, there's nothing that really says, hey, I can do something. So they're going to log, which makes sense. I can play, I can play cart, that's fine. And I zap that because I want to make sure that Okay, I'll, I'll back up here right here. Yeah, this is this is kind of important here. Okay, so that Ice Spirit froze the cannon. I mean, yeah, froze cart. So Musketeer is going to get a free shot. But the key here is that once it revives, they're hoping that the skeletons get the cart's attention and Musketeer at full health will be able to take down cart, walks forward, and then here comes Hog and the game is over. That's their plan. But thank goodness I had a zap right there, which now takes care of that and now only does also does damage to Musketeer. I should have an advantage right here, but that's fine. So now I'm thinking, okay, this may be a good opportunity to try to steal some... Uh, to steal some tower damage right here. And the reason why is because if there's anybody that comes to the bridge, they're going to get hit by cannon. If they come on the right side, so in center field, where the, to the right of the, of the mortar, then I can fireball them and see, see what happens. If they try to pull a distraction, I'm fine with it. So that's why I played mortar right there. So I played Tombstone thinking that, okay, it may work. And I think it almost like did. So you see like how Cart right there is taking care of Ice Golem. So they're really desperate right here to try to find a way to get it. And they see the opening, they're going for it. And this was a disaster and a half because I'll rewind that here. Okay, so that was a very smart by them to play skeletons. Now, in my head, and I'm at 10 elixir, which I hate, I have to play something. So I'm going to play cart right here. They play hog now, which is smart because, okay, I don't have... Tesla's gone. Tesla's out of rotation. The only way I can stop hog from getting to the bridge, um, to the to the princess tower is to throw hut they know this they know this this is not a secret they know what they, they know what i have in my hand so i tried to fireball both hog and musketeer at the same time and it didn't work and i whiffed on both of them which was terrible and i thought the game was over right here the only good thing was that that you if you see If you watch, right here, watch cart. It moved one tile up to start hitting Musketeer. If it stayed where it was, the game is over. Because the Musketeer just walks forward. Or no, Musketeer doesn't walk forward. Musketeer stays right there and hits cart. But cart's out of range. And then it just takes care of these two skellies right here. Walks forward, hits the tombstone, and then just does insane amount of damage and the game is over. And I have nothing to stop it. I have to probably put a Tesla down out of desperation. But because of that, now I have a second opportunity. And I can play Tesla.
I was actually fine with this. Now, my only concern is them playing Hog, which they did. And I have to play Hut, and I have to waste a Hut, which I really don't like doing it. In my head, I'm thinking the game is over here. Now, there was one thing that was a little bit curious here, and I'm trying to figure out what happened. Here. Okay, they didn't have Log in their hand. So, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, they're going to log that, and then we have to figure it out from here. So, really, I'm just waiting to get to 9 Elixir, and then, okay. In my head, I'm thinking, okay, I'll probably put down Mortar now, next. Because I'm trailing. And then just hope for the best. That's what's in my head right now. Because we're in double elixir time. And we're in double elixir time. All they really have to do is fireball me out. The game is over. So I'm ahead and thinking, okay. The only way I can really try to win the game is just, I have to be super aggressive and get lucky. Because I'm thinking it's one, two, three, three, six. I think it's like three fireballs. And they win the game. And they also have luck. So, they're going to go with Hog, but I have Tesla, and this, I think, was the beginning of the comeback right here. You see, I have Mortar in my hand at 6 Elixir. I play Tesla, and I have a fully healthy cart. So, what's going to happen is, after, after Hog is gone, if they throw the Fireball on cart, it's still alive. Then they have to bring Musketeer, which I have a Fireball ready for. But in between, if they don't do anything, then I'm going to have Tesla at center field. I'm going to have Cart going to the left. I can squeeze a Mortar right in between them. And then they cannot play anything right at the bridge, like a cannon to stop a Mortar. Then we have an opportunity. So you see, that's what I was trying to do. They bring Musketeer. And I was able to get both of them. They're both gone. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is this is the opportunity right here. And this, I this is something I am starting to understand as I play this deck a lot more with this lineup, is that if I can get two cards on the board, it's pretty much not so game over, but that's a massive advantage. It used to be for me in in previous. When I was uh, playing this deck, is that if I get two huts down on the board, I win the game. It's guaranteed I win the game. Uh, two huts, because it just becomes an overwhelming uh, attack. Just you're just getting chipped out um, by so many spear goblins. Now it's if I get two carts on the board, and you see that they both still have their the wheels. It is this is pretty pretty good. I mean, yeah, they're hitting. Um, They're hitting uh, the mortar, but that's you see like what's happening here. One gets on the tower, and one gets goes there, and they're they're having to throw everything. So based on that whole sequence, so I fireball that, get rid of that. I was thinking hut, but okay. I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's see if I can get another cart on the board. And this is my offense right here. I can't play Skeleton King at this point. And I wish I had Zap right there, because if I had Zap, then the game is really over at this point. But now it becomes... Now they're... Now they're freaking out. I can tell at this point that they're freaking out. And the reason why is because they're just trying so much throwing everything. They're just cycling. They're not cycling to, to try to win the game in terms of the tower. They're just cycling to, to not to lose. Again, all they have to do is start throwing fireballs and they win the game. They have not thrown a fireball in overtime. I don't think they've thrown a fireball in overtime. 
It's now been 45 seconds. They have not thrown a fireball. They, they just throw fireballs and do the same thing where they're cycling um, skeleton, um, ice spirit, ice golem. That's it. Log, fireball, log, fireball. You can just see the five cards in their hand. It's just ice spirit, skeletons, ice golem, fireball, log. And then you're back to what you have. You have um, ice spirit, ice golem, skeletons, fire, uh, log, fireball. And you do it again. And that's a super fast. Um, that's a super fast cycle you can go through. But they haven't done it yet because they're freaking out that I'm gonna win the game. So seeing those two carts fully healthy right at the bridge, and they are freaking out. So I'm thinking, okay, this is a good opportunity to try Skeleton King and just see if we can get something out of it. And normally I would not play Skeleton King at this point, but I'm thinking, okay, let's go for it. Uh, that log right there. Oh, I want to. I want to um, pause on that log. Not this log. That was a desperate log, as well. Okay, this log right here. I thought they would be not necessarily as smart. You know, if, if you're gonna play 2.6, then you know you have some level of understanding of the game when I play Skeleton King they have to know in their head that okay if Skeleton King activates their super then I have the counter with log but the because they played log so early now I can activate super and I'm fine now I'm not gonna get as many like skeletons because I barely have like one or two in, in the in the tank. But at least I can activate it and and create a threat. Remember, they still have not thrown a fireball yet. <laughs> so I activate super. And even though it's just only a couple of it, even though it's only a couple of skeletons. They just, they're, they're, they do just enough of a distraction. And that, that was an amazing uh, fireball to, uh, that, was, that was an amazing fireball to uh, Tesla. I usually never get that. So I don't know why they play cannon at this part right here. And I think it was because they didn't think they had anything else in their hand. They had, um, did they have skeletons? Uh, let's see, did they have skeletons in their hand? Okay, they played, no, they, they had log. But again, if they throw log, then it gives them one step closer to fireball, which was weird. So they played log, yep. And even if they throw like, a, like they have ice spirit skeletons if my thought process would have been okay ice spirit skeletons that's four troops on the board if i play mortar then they then they bring in cannon but they play cannon now because they were worried that cart was going to get through which i don't think it would have i think it would struggle so musketeer comes in and this is kind of their last chance right here then I was, then, and I'm gonna, uh, I'll talk about the Tesla right here. So I have, I have Tesla in my hand. I know that, okay, this is, this is the chance. We're still trailing. This whole game, we're still trailing. <laughs> you know, but they're in paranoia mode that they think the game is over right here. I have to play perfect for, for this game to turn. So we're not out of it yet. So, a lot of people would put Tombstone on the board right now. But to put Tesla on the board where it's doing damage. Now, oh, let me let me back up here. If I play Tombstone, which a lot of people would play Tombstone because it's three elixir and it's available right now. I would just immediately play. What you do is you set that up for 
another Skeleton King push, which is in my head, and we're gonna we're gonna cycle right. You know, we could we're gonna have enough elixir to get to that at that moment. But if I play Tesla now, then we'll have two attackers on Hog, and then they're gonna have to figure out what to do from there. Because they can't bring Musketeer, they can't really bring Ice Skull, and they can't really bring Skeletons, because it's just going to get zapped by the two Teslas right away. So the general, I guess, thought process, like, I would say most people would go for Tombstone right here. But Tesla is really the stronger play, because you're stopping their one hope. Uh, at the moment here. So I play Tesla. And I'm just hoping that it, it does enough damage. And then I think they realize, okay, we're just gonna try to, to uh, cycle as fast as possible and then try to win the game tonight. So, looking at that game, I would say that, you know, looking back at it that yeah I have to play very perfect to win the game but it also is taking advantage of their their mistakes as well because that game should have been over a way long time ago when all they had to do was just cycle you know through their small cards throw a log fireball the game is over they had they had no they had I mean I had no way to stop that but they panicked once I found an opening and then by the time they were say, by the time they were able to say oh, okay I think I have a chance to win the game then it, I won the race so that was that's the thing.